An old man came to me and said, Todd, I've come from John G. Lake's ministry in Portland. The Lord told me to come and give you a message. This old guy. I think he's dead now. This guy said to me, the Lord told me to bring with you the angel that was a part of the healing movement. And I looked at him and I thought, oh yeah. He said, I brought the angel with me. I went, oh, great there, buddy. You brought the angel with you. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, I did, Todd. He's standing over there at the back of the tent. And so, courtesy, courtesy, I looked. And there he was. 14-foot angel. And I fell out of my body and landed on the ground. After that encounter took place, that's when this healing gift manifested in my left hand. Too many know about the Bible, but they don't believe it. Too many know about Jesus Christ, but they haven't accepted him as personal savior of their lives. And it's very clear in the word of God what we must do, for we must be born again. When I was saved and I bowed my head and said, Father God, I want to be a Jesus man. Our ministry uh, hangs on this scripture verse. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. bit awkward but it's a dodge so it's not as awkward as, as a Ford or a Chev. Well, that's my opinion anyway. <laughs> Some people are late for church because they've got to change a tire. Other people are late for church because they've got to change a dollar. Well, this is our 47th year of tent meetings. We started in 1958. So a few more years, we'll, we'll have our, uh, our golden 10th anniversary, I suppose. Uh, we preached the gospel all through the year and uh, talked to people about the Lord. And quite often, uh, you, get a, you get the harvest time in, in the tent meeting. And we see many people turn to the Lord in tent revivals. 
My father is a very focused individual who has his mind set on what he feels is in his heart from God to do, and uh, he will not waver from that, uh, and there will be nothing that can deter him. The negative side of that would be to think of him as stubborn, but the good side of that is, is persistence, and he will never give up. I always try to help my dad with them because, you know, he's getting up in his years and, and I always think, well, he's doing too much work and oh. he just grabs these heavy poles, he goes, it's okay, I'm a little soft now, but by the end of the summer, I'll be throwing these things up here like toothpicks. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this awesome opportunity to put out a tabernacle and pitch a tent for the glory of God to come. You know, you walk into a church and it's almost like there's a, there's a pre-established mentality. You walk into church and here's what happens inside of a church. Oh, listen to the sound of that, Ivan. You hit something. You walk into a tent and it doesn't seem to be that pre-established mentality. So it's kind of like, uh, what's going to happen here? You know, what's going to go on? Why did they set up this tent? You know. You know, what's this about? It's almost like going to the circus. What's what's going to happen next? I pick Pacific t-shirts a lot of times when I plan on going somewhere because I'm carrying a message. <laughs> I'm going with an intent of meeting people, and I want them to know what, my, what I believe in. The gap. God answers prayers. Pray for China. That's a good one. Jesus! <laughs> I haven't led the most prudent life. I was a stripper at night and a housekeeper in the day. These girls asked me if I wanted to come to church. I went to church and I accepted Christ and I quit my job. We were on welfare for a while, but I'm like, I ain't got a chance in hell. I'll be sleeping in my car. I don't have money for a hotel room. I got enough money for gas to get me up there and get me back. <laughs> That's it. Motels, you know what I mean? It ain't like I ain't slept out in the open before, so I ain't sweating that stuff.
Test one, one. How many of you, this is your very first tent revival meeting? Put up your hand. This is your very first time in a tent. Well, that's about three quarters of you. Well, we're going to have fun. Praise God. Let's give a warm welcome to Todd Bentley as he comes and shows you. in one year. I can feel cancers, by the way. There's something that happens in my hand when I touch cancer. I'm a Holy Ghost man. I'm a Holy Ghost man. I like a fast-paced life, you know? I'm into anything loud and fast. That's kind of my life wrapped up. Loud, fast. Hallelujah! In these meetings, people are expecting to see miracles. In the tent, there's a lot of expectation. There's a lot of excitement. And you can feel it in the air. <laughs> it's the presence of God that comes down. And so people are expecting a touch from the Lord. Mm. <laughs> I like the more free, loud, black style preaching, even though I'm white. You know, I like that. I like that. Let's be excited about it if we're going to be excited about it, you know? How? What? You know, I do know at times people's future, past, present. I operate in the Word of Knowledge. I can call people out at times in my meetings that I've never met. I'll know their name, how old they are, what's wrong with their body, where they came from, what the name of their sister is, what the name of their brother is. I can operate in that. People go, are you a psychic, Todd? I go, no, I'm a prophet. People come to my meetings because they're fascinated by that. Though they don't want Jesus, they want the gifts, they want the healing, they want the miracle. They want to see if it's real. We ask you to draw many hungry hearts to come and come to you. Draw your people together, Lord, and bring in the lost that don't know you yet, and save them and deliver them and set them free, and turn hearts and lives from the bondages of sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe in real Christianity, not just going through the forums and, and nothing happening, but I believe in the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Oh. People didn't have TVs in their homes, and uh, so there wasn't too much uh, entertainment, really. And uh, it didn't seem to matter what reserve we go to with the tent, they just pack it up. There's always lots of lively music and some good sound Bible preaching. The time of this tent meeting was uh, that Barbara and I were engaged to be married. <laughs> I had asked her to marry me, and she said, I'll pray about it. And uh, so I gave her a good long time to pray about it. I never brought the subject up again until July the following year. 
in 62, the time of this tent meeting in. But this time, she must have got the green light because she said, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we made our plans to be married the following June. And our kids were raised in tent beings. <laughs> this is David and Esther, our, our two oldest kids, just outside the tent playing around in the grass. Well, I was pretty much raised on tents. So it was always quite exciting as a kid. <laughs> I remember the time that um, we were getting ready to go to the tent meeting, and we got down the road, and, and you said, oh, we got to go back. We forgot John. So he turned around, came back. He, we got John, and then we got a little further down the road, and then you're like, oh, we got to go back. I forgot the hymn books. And then I think there was a third time, I think he said, oh, I forgot my accordion. We have to go back yet again. I don't remember that. <laughs> it seems like we're in such a fast age that people are in a hurry, and they, they maybe want to get home. And nowadays, as soon as it gets a wee bit cool, oh, people want, people want some heaters right away. They seem to be more modernized now and want. But I still have memories of, I was 11 years old and dad would take me to Angel Acres, you know. These would be, of course, Hell's Angel gatherings and different people from different bike clubs. And it was one big party, you know, and I would go there at 11, 12 years old. But of course, we've left behind that part of yeah. our lifestyle, you know, the party aspect of our lifestyle, anyways. I know we get probably party and Holy Ghost. Gave him a huge big tree. Oh, look at him, Mom. Mom look he at says, him. Hey, wait for more. Well, when I came in, you already did. Dad pouring the beer. Every pitcher's got a shot of beer in it. Uh, Dad's got a picture of me right, drinking so beer at six. All three kids here. Uh, okay. You know what? You know what really freaks out the family today? Uh, Is that you and I. We're so changed. We don't do drugs. We don't do alcohol. And now we travel around the world preaching, preaching the gospel hey, of Jesus talking. Christ. But then when you changed, when you phoned me that one day, and you said, well, Dad, uh, I found Jesus. I'm like, oh, no, Todd. Another one of those cults. And you're going to see the power of God set this man free. In the name of Jesus Christ, and with I command that devil, come out of you now. Because I didn't believe in any of this stuff. You send me these videos and I look at them going, Give it here. Todd, this is really stupid. You push people down and then you, you pray and ask them to give you money. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Keep this Jesus thing away from me. I don't want nothing to do it. Until the time when Barbie, uh, when Barbie uh, appendicitis ruptured. Well, the doctor says to me, the doctor says to me, he says, I'm going to give your daughter 30% that she'll live through the surgery. Yeah. I stood there, and all of a sudden I said, yeah. Dad, I phoned him, I said, Dad, you got to phone Todd. You guys wanted me to pray for Barb because yeah. her appendix was rupturing. It was Christmas yeah. Day, and I wanted Dad to learn to pray. Yeah. So I said, Dad, you pray, and I said, Dad, I'll agree with you that a miracle would take place. Yes. And one did. Yeah. A miracle took place, and it's interesting that because of Barbie's miracle, in many ways, that turned your guys' heart oh, towards... Oh, it, it, it majorly right? did. Oh, absolutely. Sometimes in life, that it takes a miracle for people to learn to believe. And in David, he, he, he took a miracle for David to believe. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Fire go through your liver. Fire burns your liver.
And if she touches you, you'll go down. <laughs> and from the first day that I got there, God's power just began to touch me. And uh, one night I went up to the platform and God's power just hit me very strongly. And this is, I don't know why this happens, but I have an idea. Um, I've been told that God's going to use me for, for healing. And, and uh, I've been told that healing fire will come out of my hands. So other than that, I really don't know why God wants to shake my hand. <laughs> It's kind of cool when you wake up and you get to see the day come to life, you know? Crack your window and smell the fresh air in the morning. I love the fresh air in the morning. I'm a fresh air person. We got these pamphlets for the, uh, for the, um, for the tent meeting tonight. Okay, so we want to invite people. I just, just be led by the Lord. Let the Lord guide us. May we be your words speaking out of our mouths and not our own. Lead us by the Spirit, Lord Jesus. Send your Spirit. If you're anything, you guys are like sick, need some healing, any injuries, anything like that, you or anybody else you know, just like come on by. Um, if you just want to check it out, it's just in a big tent, it's not in a church or anything like that. So you don't even have to enter in if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can just kind of check it out. So feel free to drop on by there and uh, yeah, healings, whatever you like. Okay, awesome. Good Jesus. There you go. Oh, I'm out of cards. Here, would you like a pamphlet? Yeah, sure. There you go. Thank you. There's a revival meeting at the exhibition grounds tonight at 6.30, and you're welcome to come. Okay. Some pretty cool stuff. It's been kind of interesting. What happens at a revival? <laughs> um, you just learn who Jesus really is. Okay. Yeah, it's really awesome. He's coming to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. How are you going to know him? You'll know him by the nail scars in his hand. He is the baptizer. Are you ready tonight? How many are saved? You want to be we come every year when Wayne has this uh, uh, tent meeting here on uh, Tree Ford Grounds, and we really enjoy it. We're glad to be able to enjoy somebody else's tent meeting now. I want you to stand to your feet because I don't know what's going to happen here tonight. But something is about to take place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to come through that line. Yes. You first. I knew I was a homosexual. I was molested and I was sexually molested by a babysitter. I was at the verge of suicide, of being depressed. I felt like nobody loved me. I felt like I wanted to kill myself. That's just how bad it got. God didn't destine you to be a statistic on a suicide sheet in a government office. He's destined you for glory. And now, you know, when God, you know, you know, He took those things, He delivered me, you know, and you know, He set me free. He set me free and He gave me something. He gave me something so powerful. He gave me something, you know, that He restored my life. He restored my, my dignity of, a, of, a, of a being a man. I'm going to do something so supernatural that when I'm done, the only thing that the people are going to be able to say is this had to have been the grace of God. Because I believe that I'm about to impart something en masse, and the spirit of grace is about to move in this tent. God's about to touch your life and anoint your strength and take you to the next level. The Holy Spirit is beginning to move right now. But we're praying for breakthroughs, breakthroughs, and breakthroughs. Lord, one thing we ask. 
ask in this moment right now. We ask for your presence. We love your hand, but we ask for your face. God, if I never saw a miracle again, but I had your glory. How hungry are you, saints? Binds up the wounds for those that have been disguarded and wounded warriors and tired and hurt, even by the church. Lord, I release that oil. We're binding up and healing wounded warriors. Releasing eagles again. Releasing the eagles that are tethered. Bringing the chains so eagles can fly. So eagles can fly. Releasing the eagles again. Releasing their eyes. Releasing their eyes. Releasing their eyes. Releasing their vision. Because the Lord is able to save to the uttermost, we need to not give up praying for people that are not saved. God is my most important one in life, ahead of my wife, ahead of everything else. Without Him, I can do nothing. Without Him, I am nothing. But. Uh, God's Word says about Jesus that in all things, He must have the preeminence. I love my wife, I love my family, but God means more than anything anybody else. I remember one day I was in prayer and I had this open vision, and in this vision I saw a single-stemmed rose. And as I was watching it, the rose erupted into fire. And uh, I heard the, the voice of the Lord speak to me, the wilderness shall blossom as the rose, which is a picture of revival, rivers in the desert, bringing life in the midst of death. And that's really what revival is, reviving. And it was a promise of miracles, and I really felt called to a miracle ministry. Working on insects is called entomology. We're trying to find as many different kinds of butterflies as we can. And in order to do that, we are trying to go to as many different kinds of environments as we can. See, he's got his, his uh, body turned toward the sun. The sun is over here. So he's basking in the sun, trying to take in as much warmth as he can. And when you're stalking a butterfly, you can talk all you want. The noise doesn't frighten him. It's the motion. They're some of the most beautiful creatures that there are, and there's such variety in the markings and the beauty of them. Shows God's handiwork in creating such beautiful things and maintaining them. There's a blue butterfly that the caterpillar exudes a, a honeydew, and the ants are very fond of the honeydew. So much so they carry the caterpillars home to their, to their end nest much to their destru own destruction because uh, the le these caterpillars, instead of eating uh, the leaves of plants like other caterpillars and butterflies, they, they eat young ants. And so while the uh, adult ants are imbibing themselves on the honeydew, their own young are being destroyed. And I often use that as an illustration of what the alcoholic does when he, 
He brings his alcohol home and he's destroying his family. There is even the change of a caterpillar through the pupa stage to become an adult butterfly. And the tremendous transformation that takes place that, that really pictures the born again experience that the Bible talks about. And being a, a crawly, creepy caterpillar that's often not too attractive, and when he becomes an adult butterfly, he comes out as a helpful creature. I was saved in um, 1987. I was 27 years old. I got saved in 1990. Uh, I was not a Christian until I was 26. Basically, I got saved, I guess, so 11, 12 years ago. We honor oh, Jesus in this city. We honor Jesus in this city. I first got saved when I was 30. I'm really starting to wonder what British Columbia is like. With every mile you travel, you're closing that gap and you're getting closer and closer. Your heart wants to jump out of your skin. It's like your the hairs on your arm will stand up from the anticipation and the excitement. So when we actually got into a relationship, we walked it out in God's way. We didn't kiss, we didn't hold hands. We don't believe in premarital sex. So we waited till we were under covenant with the Lord in marriage. Say hello. Can you put my wife in? I don't think so. Hi. Oh, hi, I'm Amanda. Nice to meet you. Oh, we're having a baby. Yeah. I used to feel like I wasn't worth anything before, but I must be worth something because somebody died on a cross for me 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Don't let your faith go down with the tent. Amen. Praise God. Good morning. Come on, wake up. There's electricity in the air. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be cool. When I call out words and knowledge, people will get healed because I see it in the spirit. And so it'll happen because it's a vision. And I'm seeing one over this section of, it, of the tent right here. Let's stand up. You, yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, this gentleman right over here, from that piece, in the white top, or the white dress shirt, right there. Yeah, you, yep. Come up here, sir. But I'll see the angel stand behind somebody as a beam of light. 
And that means the Lord's going to heal that person. Somebody else up here has got a bone disease. Who, one of you got migraine headaches all the time. Who is it? Somebody else on my far left here, you got a, a honey up. That's you who wants me to stand up right now. Anybody totally deaf in right here? That'd be real fun. Yeah. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke pain. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke tumor. And you'll be free from migraine headaches from this day forward. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, loose of divine healing. Stand up. What did you just feel? Go for your body. What did I feel like? Shocking. The man that needs the new heart. Let me pray for you because I saw a creative miracle. God's going to give you a new heart. This is Jesus. He's going to touch you tonight. Travis, can I just get you to bring your knee down just a bit? Thank you. This 2006 is, a, is new beginnings for us. We're just kind of in the process of making our transition in our home by having a new arrival. The Lord began to minister to me, and it was like God began to say, like, you know, you know, go get your baby. You know, it's time to deliver your baby. And you want to know the sex of the baby? Yeah. It's a little girl. This child here, from what I understand, has a liver disease. Is that correct? The child is yellow. The liver is infecting bacteria in the body. From a, he doesn't have a small intestine, so he can't. Okay. So is it incurable? They've given up the doctors. So if he doesn't have a miracle. If he doesn't have a miracle, he won't make it. The Lord really moved my heart to pray for this child. Amen. Father, I ask you for this miracle. Father, I ask you to create the intestine. I ask you, Holy Ghost, to remove the bacteria and the infection. Holy Spirit, touch the liver. I command the spirit of death and disease to leave. In Jesus' mighty name, I ask right now for this miracle tonight, God. I ask in Jesus' mighty name, I command that liver to be recreated. I ask for the creation of an intestine. I ask for a miracle in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Now, is there anybody here that has cancer right now? That's terminal. We're going to open it up for testimonies here tonight. Come and testify. Praise the Lord. I didn't want any of my family members or I didn't want any of my friends to, to die unsaved. Whether you know Christ, you know you can make, you're going to make it to heaven Whether you, when you're born again. But if you're not born again and you don't know the gospel, then you're not going to make it. And... Lord loves us. <laughs> What a compassionate God we have, and how much He loves us, and he, how much He He just uh, just adores how much when we just take time out for Him and just to praise Him. 
You know, I just thank the Lord for everything that uh, He's doing uh, in my life, but also in every other uh, Christian person's life. And just like to give Him all the glory. You're the answer, Lord. We look to you for the answer. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Uh, expect, expecting more people tonight, but uh, uh, long ago I came to the conclusion that we can't minister to those who aren't here. We just have to go ahead and minister to those that are here. We could fret all through the service because of the ones that didn't make it and, <laughs> and it spoiled the service for us, but we just got to go ahead and minister to those who are here and, and expect that uh, as the nights go on that the interest will grow and more will be here. The dude is on fire. He's just totally on fire for Christ. And that excites me. You can see hands, God's hand on Todd. Tone deaf this shit. Go! What's wrong with you? Jesus Christ. I've been deaf in my left ear since birth. Deaf in your left ear since birth. Come here. Lord, I ask you to open this deaf left ear. It's been deaf from birth. You deaf and dumb spirit. I've taken some really good ass. I've snorted some really good coke. There's no high like the high you get with Christ. He has given me some amazing highs. You can't parallel them with marijuana or acid. I walk away feeling like I've received a blessing that I have no tangible way of ever telling you what it's like unless you experience it yourself because it's from the inside out. It's from the inside out. <laughs> God just shows up and then boom, you know, and he just comes, whoa. He just comes, you know, and wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be people that that you could say, okay, they're just in it, they're just conference chasers, they're just, you know, tent chasers, they're just in it for the spiritual high. So what? Should that should that keep you from experiencing an aspect of God's character that is true?
flames for me and fire represent passion. And I'm passionate about uh, Jesus. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it, for me, fire is a picture of uh, passion, a uh, passion. And, uh, and that's what we're about. The Bible talks about the age of retirement of the priests. And I believe it was around 55 years old. I, I asked my father, I said, Dad, how old were the priests when they retired? And uh, he didn't answer, but he, he said, how old was Moses? And uh, reminded me that Moses continued to, to do his work until he died. I, I don't think there's retirement in store for him. His future is, is preaching until he can't preach anymore, taking the tent until he can't carry it anymore. Just as long as, as God gives him life, that's what he will do. And I don't think he has plan B.